And we are live. All right. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Kapix Pro. It's alas Pix Pro na, mga Kapix Pro. Kamusta, kamusta, kamusta po? Oo nga. Eh, ayan, uh, by the way, March 1 ngayon, no? Ang bilis. No? Parang may Christmas tree pa ako. <laughs> that was March 1 na. Summer na. Ano ba yan? Ang bilis. Ang bilis ng panahon. So, kamusta naman po ang first quarter <laughs> ng 2024? Ano ba? Sobrang bilis. Kasi nga, may Christmas tree pa tapos ito na pala. No? And, uh, and ve but very, very productive, I might say. Kasi marami na tayong mga nailatag din ng mga activities no at the mga um should I say partnerships no as far as uh, um Pixpo is concerned so nakaka-excite lang no yes ano may may ano po tayo eh may kasama tayong mga familiar faces I <laughs> so know. pakinggan yes pakinggan po natin sila high press gen or former press gen na ba Opo, nakakamiss naman. <laughs> Parang ako ngayon Hello. lang ako as as oo, nakakamiss mag-host. Uh, hello po, good afternoon. Our our ever pretty gorgeous VP Ruby and also the smart, very snappy VP uh, ED Arlene. Magandang hapon po sa iyo. Walang pretty. <laughs> very pretty. <Sorry> yeah. <laughs> Sure lang. Yes. And of yeah. course, may kasama ka. One of our regular mainstayrian sa ating kwentong cybersecurity. Hi, Sir Henry. Kumusta? Hello. Magandang hapon. Nakakamiss yeah. mo talk later. Yes. Uh, oops. Yung speaker natin po sa last time. Oo nga. Dahil sabi mo yan, Sir Henry, ilalatag namin ulit yung ano mo. <laughs> <laughs> yung speaking slot mo dito. Yeah. <laughs> Trainer din po ba si Sir Henry? Maybe we can set up another training, di ba? With Gigamon this time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pwede po, no? Uh, gawin po natin. Mm -hmm. uh, probably about cloud visibility. Yes. And uh, yeah, east-west traffic visibility. Mga ganyan po. Pwede po. Hosted Ayan. by. Pag-usapan natin further <laughs> with uh, Gigamon. And of course, we have another guest which we will formally introduce later on. Hi, Sir Vlad, all the way from Singapore. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Happy to be in this uh, prominent audience. Yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Sir Vlad, for gracing our invitation. And, and of course, no, um, yung mga ating mga uh, agal dito, parokyano ba, should I say, no? Na maghihintay rin sa atin tuwing alas 5. Okay, nag game na po, alas Alas Casey na, alas kwa, ano na, kwento ang cyber security na. <laughs> yeah, exciting naman yung ating topic for today. Uh, E.D. Arlene. Yes, kasi ano eh, very, siguro sa panahon ngayon, if I may uh, divulge uh, a short, uh, sabihin na natin overview of the topic, kasi cloud visibility eh. So, wala siguro sa panahon ngayon ang hindi pa nagkakaroon o wala man lang kahit madiit na o kapiting na idea about cloud visibility. Pero with our KC for today, we're going to delve deeper, deeper on how are we going to keep ourselves protected, especially uh, with the technology that we have right now. And I think uh, Gigamon would be the better uh, resource speaker for this topic, no? which later mag-uusapan pa natin ng in-depth. So sa mga Kapix Pro natin, continue to like, share, and of course, Batuhin nyo kami ng mga questions nyo about cybersecurity. We would gladly uh, talk about that later on, especially after the uh, the sharing na ibibigay sa atin ng Gigamon about their topic later on. Right, oo. At alam naman natin, ang Gigamon kasi hindi lang generous in sharing uh, their knowledge and wisdom, but they're also generous in uh, giving away some... Something for our audience, tama ba yun, uh, Press Jen? May narinig ako kanina. Ay, opo naman. Uh, hindi lang po tayo bubusugin sa impormasyon, uh, sa talakayang ito, or of course, mag, ma, ma, makapagsabi na tayo ng tara, kape, dahil magpapamigay po tayo ng Starbucks uh, e-vouchers para po sa ating oh, mga... Oo naman. Kasi po, 
Uh, so ang gagawin lang po ay makinig. Madadali lang naman po ang tanong mamaya. No? Uh, so sana po uh, yung ating audience. At nakikita ko po, nandito na po yung ating mga parokyano. Sabi mo nga, ano, uh, VP Ruby. So... I think sila po yung ating mga ano tawag dito madalas na sumusuporta at definitely diyan tayo makakakuha ng mga winners para mamaya. Oo nga eh parang gusto yes. ko na lang din maging audience. Pwede ba? <laughs> Pwede naman po. <laughs> Pero maganda bigyan na natin ng ano no pangalan tong yung mga ating regular parokyano nga. Kumbaga kung meron tayong mga sa Black Pink ay mga ano Ano ba tawag sa mga Blackpink uh, followers? Kung ikaw ay follower ng Casey, dapat Ay, oh, meron tayong oh, ano sa kanila, di ba? So, mm-hmm. the next time na i-address natin sila, meron na silang, ano, meron na silang call-out sign, kumbaga. Correct. Ay, Kigaw. Okay, simulan na natin. Ito nga, regular na lagi nating nakakasama, Tibo. Good PM po, Capex Pro. Magandang hapon sa iyo. And from Mike Angelo Matrido, good afternoon and happy Friday. Pirubi. Ayan, so, siyempre dito nag-hi Gigamon team, si Brian Urubio Sugitan. And good afternoon din sa iyo, si Gian Nicole Huson. Ayan, at greetings from Castronics pala, si Brian, no? Yes. Sa Castronics pala. Hello, hello, hello sa inyo. Alright. Yes. So definitely hindi ano, no? Hindi, hindi case, uh, we come from different organizations, companies. Pero it's never been a, uh, a competition after all uh, with PixPro. Kasi napapansin nyo, napapanood din tayo ng iba't ibang mga technology partners and industry parallels natin dito. Eh. So it's about the sharing of information, the sharing of best practices and experiences. So napakagandang avenue ang PixPro for letting everyone know what our advocacy in cybersecurity is all about. So nakakatawa naman. May mga nakikita tayong ganitong presence. Online. Yes, and, and, and if I may just share, no, uh, meron akong na-meet na isang teacher, no, tapos sabi niya, uy, lagi ako nanonood ng ano ba yung tawag nyo, kwentuhang, hindi niya ma-explain, ganyan. Pero uh, nanonood daw siya lagi, at minsan, uh, nagigets niya yung topic, no, at nag i siya. Pero pagka mga highfalutin, yun ang term na sinabi niya, pag highfalutin, minsan, Uh, hindi na raw. But most of the time, tinatapos niya. Kasi parang sabi niya, cybersecurity is really something new uh, to to her. Especially yung sa kanila. Kasi oh, oh, medyo old-timer teacher na siya. Tapos pagka nakaka, ano siya, nakakakuha siya ng bagong uh, uh, learnings, no? Uh, Tuwan-tuwa siya at sinashare niya doon sa mga estudyante din doon niya from time to time. So, yun. Thank you pala sa iyo, ma'am. <laughs> Ayo B, ma-share ko lang din po VP uh, Ruby, ganyan din sa akin. So ako po ay aside from being a Pex, a Pex Pro uh, member, ako rin din ay miyembro ng The Good Samaritans. So ito lang naman yung binuo kong grupo <laughs> ng mga mommies sa school ng anak ko. So nakikita nila every time na nagpo-post po tayo ng live, ah uh, Tapos nakikita ko, nag-join sila. Nakikita ko yung name na nagpa-pop up siya parang nakalagay. Oh, Mami, eh, parang Jen Ramirez joining, parang ganyan. So ngayon, sinasabi nila na, oh, uh, cyber security advocate ka pala. So magtatanong sila sa akin ng mga bagay na, pag nakareceive ako ng ganitong text, ano gagawin ko? So you also share information, right? So malaki po, ang malayo ang nararating ng Pix Pro. Hindi lang dito sa uh, Pilipinas, even outside Philippines po. So please create, uh, uh, continue creating this wave po sa Philippines. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pes Jen. Nakakataba naman ng puso yung mga ganong um, information na nakukuha natin, no? Ayan. Oh, hindi, Arlene, meron pang isang uh, humahawal yes. dito sa ating... Uh, Ang dami, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. Good afternoon daw, sabi ni Oni Meg Tops. At saka si Tibo, yeah. inaangkin na niya yung isang e-voucher ng Starbucks. Oo, oh, oh. kanina, kanina na daw yun. <laughs> Sukin natin yun. <laughs> Ayan. Good afternoon din sa'yo, Victor Acevedo. And uh, hi, uh, good afternoon. Hi, Gigamon team. Kay, from Danny Cheng. Danny Cheng, Malaysia po. From Malaysia. Ah, hello. Oh, ang layo ng narating. Okay. And uh, greetings from Artec B Services. Hello, hello sa inyo. Hello, nga. Yes, continue spreading and evangelizing cybersecurity awareness and education regardless of whatever organization or affiliations we belong to. Right, yeah. So, Edie Arlene, 
I, yes. I think it's about time to yes. introduce our, our uh, guest speaker for today. Okay. It is our, of course, with pride and honor to introduce to you today one of the best speakers for this particular topic under the Gigamon, the wings of the Gigamon, Mr. Vladimir M. Yordanov, the Senior Director of Solution Engineering for Gigamon Asia, Pacific, and Japan, and the, lead, and the current lead for the Region Solution Engineering and Consulting Team. So good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon here in the in Manila. I think afternoon pa rin naman ata sa Singapore. Yes, but yes. yes. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to Quantuhang Cybersecurity, sir. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Thank okay, you, sir. sir. Happy to be with you virtually. <laughs> and with us, of course, Sir Vladimir is going to talk about uh, deep observability for the hybrid cloud. So we'll give the floor to you, Sir Vlad, for your discussion. Okay, thank you. So shall we start? Yep. When you're ready, sir. Uh, yes, of course, I'm ready. Just let me start the show. And... All right, so everybody can see my screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, thank you very much for the wonderful introduction uh, and happy to be here. So over the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes, uh, we're gonna talk about uh, observability for the cloud and observability has been a topic um, of, uh, for many, many discussions uh, over the last uh, couple of uh, couple of years uh, and uh, as we go along I'm going to share a couple of examples throughout my practice as a matter, as a matter of fact I just completed a business trip uh, to one of the uh, uh, countries in uh, South in in, um, in Asia Pacific uh, and there were some very interesting use cases uh, that uh, that demonstrated the um, the benefits uh, of visibility and why should you monitor uh, your networks uh, you know and your cl uh, cloud infrastructure so there are a couple of things that uh, has been going on over the last uh, uh, couple of uh, couple of years, uh, and every customer is unique with a new new set of challenges. Uh, but we hear that there are some common threats across all of the customers. So the first one uh, is uh, automations of the workloads. Workloads are moving around from VM to containers to public cloud to multi cloud, and sometimes even uh, to back uh, back on premises again. Uh, and leadership across the board is keen on leveraging automation for scalability and for effectiveness, as well as automating IT risk uh, and management uh, workflow. Another another major uh, point um, uh, for concerns and uh, and that generates a lot of initiatives uh, is securing the hybrid cloud. So uh, security is already quite uh, a bit of challenges these days. Uh, but also uh, when you have uh, a hybrid environment with workloads uh, distributed across, across uh, multiple uh, infrastructures, it is imperative that uh, you provide adequate security so that uh, these new solutions uh, do not increase the risk uh, and compromisations nowadays can be devastating. Uh, and uh, we all hear the news with many organizations uh, being compromised. Uh, I think that Microsoft was one of the recent uh, the recent victims, uh, and you definitely don't want to be uh, in the new slide uh, as a compromise organizations. And last but not least, uh, it is do more with less. Um, especially nowadays, uh, especially this year, like like gone are the days of COVID when organization was spending left and right um, to, to build up the infrastructures. Now, actually, all of the money that was spent uh, for this infrastructure, now they have to deliver. Right, and it's always like this: you spend the money, and afterwards you tighten up a little of the belt, uh, and you want to see the the result of your of your investments. Uh, and organizations nowadays are looking to maximize their investments, uh, do more with less, um, and also um, running a more efficient uh, networks as well. Uh, cloud and hybrid cloud uh, tends to be uh, an, a bit uh, on the expensive side, and there are a lot of hidden costs that organizations need to consider, especially when they're moving. Uh, to the public cloud uh, from on-premises, uh, and this is the drive uh, for optimizations and cost efficiencies. Now, uh, moving to the next one, to the next slide, is the so, so so before we continue with the rest of the presentation, I, th I thought it was important 
to spend a couple of minutes talking into why deep observability is important from today's business. Why do we need to monitor applications in the first place? And there are a couple of very good reasons for it. Now, we have to keep in mind that today everything is digital uh, and you have to be able to control it. And the way you control it and monitor it um, it is by having um, the visibility into what's going on. And this, in, this involves a couple of things. One of it uh, is, of course, capturing, aggregating, and optimizing, uh, optimizing and processing the traffic. Uh, and the other set is uh, where the tools comes in, security or monitoring tools, where information is, display, uh, where information is display, displayed and decisions are made. So this, this is uh, some of the key benefits uh, of uh, observability uh, and deep observability for the business. So first of all, increase the sales and revenue. Uh, if you want to drive revenue, you need to know what's going on into your network. And for that, you need visibility into your network. Uh, improve performance and user experience, maintaining SLAs, managing cybersecurity threats, um, accelerating cloud adoptions, uh, you know, reducing network complexity, cost optimizations, compliance, all of those uh, key initiatives and key points that are very high on the agenda of uh, many business leaders are driven by visibility and deep observability. One of the cases that I, that I wanted to share with the audience today um, is that um, I recently spoke to a service provider that runs uh, a massive amount of uh, applications infrastructure uh, on a private and public cloud. And um, this service provider has been paid um, a substantial amount of money by banks for SMS services, uh, you know, dual factor communications, transactions, notifications, et cetera, et cetera, and for millions of dollars per month. Now, the service provider has an SLA with the bank that the SMS needs to be delivered between three and five seconds. Anything more than five seconds since unacceptable and they would not meet the SLA. Now, the only way to maintain those SLAs, to be able to uh, ensure that you're meeting them is by having visibility. You have to be able to track uh, the network, what's going where, and also you need to have the locks and the proofs that the SLAs are meant. And this is just one of the example why visibility and deep observability is of extreme importance for today's business. Cybersecurity and operational efficiency at top of the list. So, okay, um, let's have a look at a couple of numbers. Uh, and the automation and that we talked about it has been um, not to the level where we want it to be. And automation is the core of running hybrid cloud and cloud workload, uh, workloads. Um, that is the reasons why organizations are moving for on-premises to cloud public or hybrid uh, is uh, for elasticity, uh, flexibility, and um, you know infrastructure and services and demand, et cetera, et cetera. This is driven by automation. However, uh, as of 2022, only 10% of the survey organizations um, have, have met those objectives. And this is actually Gartner is estimating that the only 10%. Uh, the goal is by uh, 2027, more than 75% of those uh, organ of the organizations expect to achieve 75% of automation within the cloud. Uh, and the reason visibility is important for, for, for that in that area is that in order to do that, you must have uh, visibility in what's happening within the network. Because if there are problems, you have to be able to address them immediately. Uh, and also you need visibility into network packets and network traffic uh, to provide uh, adequate security. Now, where the workloads, um, when we, uh, and this is from 2023 Flexera um, State of the Cloud Report. Now, um, more, more than 87% of the organizations uh, are running and multi-cloud. Multi-cloud, that's mean that uh, multiple clouds, multiple public cloud, that will be Azure, AWS, Google Cloud, Oracle Public Cloud, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, single private cloud, less than 2%, and single public cloud, um, around 11%. And this is the trend that we see. Uh, most of the organizations, they don't want to be tied to one cloud provider. They want to use multiple cloud providers. But also, uh, in a hybrid environment where you have uh, a main data center, um, on-premises data center that holds data, 
or other critical assets that organizations uh, does not feel comfortable to put in the cloud. Um, that, is a, that is a perfect opportunity to hi in a hybrid environment to utilize different cloud that fits uh, uh, best of your needs. So AWS would be good for one thing, but you want to do certain things in Azure. So, okay, so certain workloads, you're going to push on Azure. And that is the behavior that we see within, uh, within our customers. Um, and of course, uh, pressure to optimize IT, uh, to optimize IT spend. As I mentioned earlier in the opening uh, uh, of this presentation, organizations now, they want to see the results uh, of their investments. Uh, and the business leader is saying to the IT executives enough, now we have to start to deliver. And uh, although it doesn't mean that um, organizations organization are not spending on IT, on cloud uh, and security, of course they are. Uh, however, uh, they're asking to be more careful uh, and they're asking to show uh, efficiency, uh, especially um, when you spend uh, a lot of money on implementing uh, massive cloud system or massive security systems, uh, you wanna see the results of it. So let's have a look at how everything fits within the cloud. So typically uh, you have um, a hybrid cloud that typically is consists of a platform um, that consists of uh, something that sits in a public cloud and some, something sits on premises. And you have applications um, and uh, data sets that are between uh, these different uh, infrastructures. Now, of course, you wanna be able to monitor uh, these workloads uh, and typically organizations employ two set of tools. So uh, they have infrastructure security and infra infrastructure monitoring. Uh, and then of course, uh, they have uh, application security and observability that typically you would see on, on the public cloud. So, and the way you get the data into the different set of tools, uh, typically organizations, they use uh, a telemetry uh, and telemetry has uh, locks and network packets uh, and on a cloud, you just have logs. Now, one of the things about the public cloud is that you don't have uh, a networking layer. In a public cloud, the networking the networking the networking layer is a set of services, uh, and those services generate logs. Uh, it's very difficult uh, to actually to achieve uh, the level of uh, network transparency. It's, it's impossible to do it in a public cloud, the way you have it on the premises, and there's a very good reasons for it. However, uh, this is a subject of different discussions. Now, the question that we need to ask, is this enough? Does this thing really get, can get you the information that you need to provide, uh, to, to have a good observability uh, for security purposes and for uh, operations management purposes? And of course, one of the problems is that uh, you don't have a network packets into the network. Um, and the locks are mutable. Mutable means that uh, they can't be modified. And the typical attacker behavior is that uh, you can't, um, once they penetrate a system, one of the first thing what they do is to modify the locks to erase uh, the, the, the traces that uh, the system has been compromised. However, the network packets are immutable. You can't really uh, change the whole network. So um, the network is the most uh, powerful source of truth. If you really wanna see what's happening within your infrastructure, you really have to look uh, on the networking level. Uh, and all this thing um, is um, related to another new trend that is coming up and zero trust. Zero trust is a very interesting trend. It's a very interesting uh, phenomenon that was created a while back, more, more than 10 or 15 years ago, but we see more and more organizations adopting it. Um, so um, initially zero trust was, um, created more than actually 13, 14 years ago in 2010. But now they will have organizations actively uh, implementing um, implementing uh, zero trust. And one of the key tenant of zero trust is network uh, visibility, visibility into the network traffic. We have organizations that have tried to achieve um, zero trust without visibility into the network. They fail uh, and Gigamon was brought in to help them deliver the required visibility so that actually they can manage the policies and they can achieve the zero trust objectives. And, and in one of the key tenants and architectures of, of zero trust, um, the, in terms of source of data, 
uh, you have the agent uh, and you have the locks and they give a certain level uh, of observability. But if you want to take it to the next level, uh, you need the network packet. So you need all three. Uh, and uh, we in Gigamon, of course, Gigamon works with uh, with network packets. But uh, a good a good solutions that deliver visibility and observability to the level that where it needs to be uh, needs to have all those three components. Of course, you have to keep in mind that while uh, the agents and the locks, the data that comes from the agents and from the locks uh, can be um, uh, modified, uh, anything that goes in the network cannot. So therefore, um, if you really want to check uh, what's happening uh, into your either operational performance or into your security, you must have uh, you must have network locks. However, that is not the case. One of the, one of the reasons why organizations get compromised uh, is uh, because first, uh, most of their security solutions, uh, most of their security uh, detection solutions uh, are based uh, and monitoring solutions based around agents and logs. Sims, for example, more than 80% uh, of the Sims are agent-based and syslog-based, uh, not network uh, packet capture, and that's one thing. And the other thing is lack of visibility uh, into the east-west movements. So typically what happens is that when the hacker penetrates you and gets into your systems, organizations do a very bad job in monitoring the lateral visibility. More than 80% of the successful attacks uh, are because of insufficient visibility into lateral movements. So, Let's go back to the original pictures and we have the platform application telemetry and the tools that uh, does uh, either infrastructure security, applications, observability, infrastructure monitoring, and how deep observability and visibility fits uh, into the whole picture. So with deep observability, what you have, um, you have the power to combine network packets with locks between the two different systems. And you have a network delivered intelligence that helps organizations to have a deep visibility into the events that are happening on their network. One of the examples that I brought earlier was, uh, like, was service providers using to monitor, to monitor um, their SLAs. But another example that I can give you uh, is delivering application context within within uh, security. So what we could do with deep observability, you can monitor the network traffic and you can identify key attributes such as post spoofing, um, uh, let's say expired certificates, cryptocurrency, and many, many others. Now, you might say, one might say, okay, my security tools can do that. Yes, they may be able to do that, but one thing what you need to ask yourselves, what is the source of information for your security tools? And the answer is that probably is going to be either locks or some spam and mirror ports. And that, got, and that gives you only a partial picture. What you really need to have an effective security across your hybrid cloud is complete visibility and observability across the entire uh, across the entire infrastructure, not just the par par public cloud, not just the private cloud, but both of them. Uh, and even if you have a multi-cloud environment, you have to be able to monitor the entire infrastructure. And this is what happened. You know, this is what happened with deep observability. You combine the best of both worlds. You have adequate. You have a strong application security. You have a strong uh, infrastructure security. You have observability across all of the platforms uh, and you can monitor in your infrastructure uh, to identify any problems and optimize the solutions. With deep observability, of course, um, you can achieve all of the objectives that we talked about earlier. Automation, you need visibility into your workloads and into the traffic to see what's happening so that you can make the right decisions your policy decision makers, the decision makers and decision engines that need to decide when a certain workload will be brought up or will brought down would need, would need the state of the network, would need the state of the applications to be able to make that decision. Security is impossible without visibility. 
one of the key use cases that we have for deep observability is security, security of the infrastructure, security of the cloud, security of the applications, uh, security of the endpoint devices, security of IoT, critical infrastructure. Every single one of these components require, require observability, deep visibility and deep observability to achieve the security that is required. Uh, and last but not least, the uh, operational efficiencies. Uh, combining all those things, you have the capability to optimize your infrastructure so that you don't waste uh, tool cycles, you don't waste, you don't waste uh, uh, cloud cycles, uh, and the whole infrastructure and ecosystems operates at maximum efficiencies. And this is how we address uh, all of the um, all of the uh, key tenants. So one of the way we address those concerns, we ensure that security um, as the workload shifts. It doesn't matter where your workloads are, they can be secure. Uh, we can, uh, with Gigamon uh, deep observability platforms, we can reduce uh, the tooling cost by 50%, uh, not just uh, saving in power, uh, and also reducing the carbon footprint. Uh, and last but not least, uh, we are sure security insurance on infrastructure level and operational level with the automation on the workloads. Uh, and on that note, thank you very much. Um, any questions? We're open for discussions. That was a brief introduction of uh, how visibility and deep observability help uh, to, secure, to well, make well, private clouds and hybrid that clouds. That was a brief introduction of uh, how visibility and deep observability help to uh, make private clouds. Okay, can we stop sh uh, sharing the yes, presentations yeah. for Vlad? Yes, okay. So that will have you on spotlight. <laughs> okay. Uh, so mga kapix, probarkada natin, key in your question once again to get a chance to win the Gigamon Starbucks e-vouchers. Uh, uh, the early, uh, um magtatag ang alam ko magkatanong si nagigamon and then oh, yes. may answer no if if they can answer then they have a chance to win uh yung e voucher ng Starbucks thank you okay, thank, thank you sir Black for for sharing the um your your knowledge in this uh, very critical um uh what do you call that um side of a uh, cybersecurity yeah um. I have a question. I'm just not sure if uh, there's some sure. kind of valid. I'll, I'll, I'll throw in the first question, Edie Arlene. Um, how big of a problem do you think is an um, encrypted traffic you know, when it uh, comes to cybersecurity? Okay, the short answer is a big problem, uh, but let me elaborate a little bit. So, um, Depending on which source um, you refer to, but it's the, it is estimated that 60 to 70 percent of the attacks are encrypted, right? So, which means that um, your security tools, traditional security defenses, would not be able to detect them. Now, when you look at the way the security defenses are implemented, you have generally you have to measure, um, you have several categories, uh, but for the sake of the, this argument, let's simplify it. You have the parameter security, which is your firewalls, IPS, your IDS, that to protect, uh, that protect uh, your, your, your key assets, your infrastructure. Uh, and also you have um, your security detection and monitoring solutions. Um, that uh, that their main focus is to monitor the events, um, um, monitor, uh, detect uh, potential intruders, um, et cetera, et cetera. Now, none of these tools, it's, it's configured uh, to monitor encrypted traffic. It doesn't mean they cannot, they can. Uh, but uh, what happened is that the firewalls, for example, if you configure to fire for firewalls to, to inspect an encrypted traffic, then usually what will happen is that you will need a much bigger firewall. Uh, and that is usually that's the way it happened. Within the network, monitoring lateral traffic or, or east-west visibility, if the traffic is encrypted, uh, most of the solutions will drop it. And the re reason being that typically the lateral network traffic is a huge amount uh, and you need uh, a massive infrastructure to be able to do it. 
or we need a specialized solution similar to Gigamon actually so we can encrypt it can decrypt the traffic uh, and send it in clear text uh, to the um, um, to the security tools and I can give an example uh, most of my colleagues here actually they have done it um, we we did the following experiment we have the same traffic the same tool um, and um, when we sent uh, the encrypted traffic uh, to the security monitoring tools, um, the utilization was about, uh, was very little. Now, when we started sending clear text, then um, the utilization increased, which means that uh, you're detecting much more traffic. Now, imagine if there was an attack in uh, and it was uh, encrypted, it, it would, would have gone through. Now, the other thing what I would like to point to everyone is that it's very easy to encrypt your attacks. There are actually services there, 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 there are services that will encrypt your attacks. So if you think that, oh, encrypted attacks, the cybersecurity attack, they're very sophisticated, they're very, very difficult to conduct. No, it is not. Actually, it's very simple and it's very easy. So uh, bottom line for everyone here, you have to consider uh, you have to consider the threats that come from encrypted traffic. It is a very serious, a very dangerous, uh, very dangerous threat. Uh, and your security solutions must be optimized to inspect uh, encrypted traffic. And the way you do it, you decrypt it, you send it for inspections, then you get it encrypted again uh, and send it back to, uh, to, um, to its destinations. Uh, and Gigamon, uh, what, that was a major issue for public cloud, but since uh, October last year, uh, Gigamon introduced some new solutions we call it Percryption uh, that enables uh, customers to inspect encrypted traffic uh, in the cloud as well. Good question, thank you. Thank you, thank you Val for answering. Okay, we have a question right here from our live audience. Correct me sure. if I'm wrong, if I, if I read this right. Is the solution a type of CM for cloud environments? Is it what you're trying to answer, Thibault? Is the solution kind of what? Sorry? A, a type of C, uh, S I E M for cloud environments. Oh, okay. Is it what you're trying so, to answer? Mm -hmm. So, um, you mean like Gigamon solution or general? Uh, so, Gigamon is not a SIM. So, what Gigamon would do is that Gigamon will collect an aggregated traffic and send it to the SIMs. So we work with uh, many key themes uh, such as uh, uh, Splunk, um, you know, Curator, Logarithm. We work with uh, Microsoft Sentinels, uh, and the sim system needs Gigamon uh, so that uh, you know they can generate uh, the events. So without solutions like Gigamon, the sims would not be able to operate efficiently. So we collaborate with sims. We provide them the traffic. Does this answer the question? One example I'll give you, one example I will give you is that uh, one of the things that we do, so first of all, um, we decrypt the traffic and send it to SIMS because if the traffic is encrypted, SIMS would not be able to process it. So that actually related to the first question, um, how how important is encrypted traffic? So one of the things what Gigamon will do, will decrypt the traffic and send it to the SIMS. Another thing what Gigamon will do is that we combine the traffic from different parts of the network, from different parts of the infrastructure, uh, complete visibility across the entire infrastructure, eliminating blind spots. So that SIM will be the, the SIMs that will be able to generate the event logs and event uh, event monitoring reports across the entire infrastructure. So that's uh, that's another that's another way um, uh, for a good use case uh, for the collaboration between Gigamon and SIM. Another use case that we have is that we generate metadata uh, and we send it to the SIMs to display events. Now, some of the events, some of the metadata uh, attributes, um, they can display, some of them I mentioned, port spoofing, we can capture it immediately. A good example for port spoofing would be when you see 443, which is HTTPS, but then the application sees something else, could be RDP or remote connection. So Gigamon can see that, SIMs cannot. Um, and we can send this thing to the SIM and SIM immediately will display it as a red flag. Hey, you may have uh, a potential compromisations here. We can't detect crypto, crypto, crypto miners directly out of the network traffic. Uh, we can't detect the expired SSL certificates. 
we can uh, detect um, we can detect weak ciphers we can detect uh, remote desktop connections we can detect uh, data exfiltration activities suspicious host activities etc cetera, etc cetera. all those um, all those uh, events that we generate and send to the sims and then afterwards the sim can consolidate them and display them into a proper format so that is one of the examples of how uh, Gigamon and Sim works together. Uh, Sir Thibault is sending his gratitude. Thank you, Sir Gublad, for answering. Another question would be in terms of major considerations. What should organization consider uh, when addressing visibility into the cloud environment, sir? So um, one of the, so okay so visibility in a cloud uh, one of the things what you need to consider is uh, so first which cloud you have uh, because they they address it uh, into a different manner the things that are done in AWS and the things that are done in Azure or in Google Cloud uh, they're different but one of the things that you need to consider is that your sources of data so whether it's going to be whether it's going to be uh, across VPCs across multiple VPCs. Uh, or within a single VPCs. Uh, and then uh, if you have multiple zones or, or larger infrastructure, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that is the first thing what you need to consider. Then another thing what you need to consider is that please, um, if, you, if you have a critical infrastructure that needs to be monitored, please consider a separate zone for tools. Don't put your tools where the applications are. Tools must be separate. A, a, a good practice is to have one, one zone let's say for security tools and one zone let's say for network monitoring tools then another thing what you need to consider are the actual tools typically the tools used by customers a combination between cloud native tools uh, and uh, tools that they have purchased from marketplace uh, and each of them they have different uh, different requirements um, so you have to consider that uh, and the last thing what you have to consider, and that probably actually I'm, I'm saying the last, but uh, usually is the first thing that you need to start with, your overall infrastructure. How many public clouds do you have? How many um, could it could be just one or it could be multiple? As uh, the numbers suggest, is that organizations they use multiple clouds. Probably you have something on premises as well. One of the use cases that we have uh, in um, if, if with the financial institution, with the very large financial institutions. Um, they use both AWS and they use Azure, and they have a whole bunch of workloads, so different, different, um, different zones. It was a very large and complex infrastructure. Now they try to do everything with cloud native tools. It didn't work. Uh, then they try to uh, duplicate the tool infrastructure on the cloud. It was too expensive, and they said, "Hey, how about we get everything from the clouds on premises and use our existing tool infrastructure?" To monitor the cloud and this is where gigamon came into place we actually we managed to capture the the, 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 the traffic uh, that was necessary from a different uh, cloud environment consolidated and send it to the uh, to the tools that were present into the data center uh, not only the customer saved saved a lot of money on uh, on tool costing but also they managed to achieve uh, a compliance and security that uh, would not be, be would not be possible and a much lower cost. Now, uh, organiz somebody may ask, hey, when you take the data from the cloud, actually that costs a lot of money. That is true, costs a lot of money, but Gigamon has a, uh, has a traffic reduction technologies that we can reduce the traffic. So it actually we, we, we send only the necessary traffic, the traffic that needs to be inspected. So that's how we say help uh, customer uh, save money uh, and achieve um, security that, uh, that actually will help them to protect them against the attacks. All right. Thank you. There is one more question here from our audience uh, sure. from Jean Nicole Luson. Could you elaborate on how machine learning and advanced analytics are utilized in deep observability for threat detection? A learning. Okay. Um, so, so what we do, so, so when you have AI learning, um, you would need you would need to train the AI. In order to train the AI, you need the data, right? And that's where we come in, right? So we collect the data uh, and send it uh, to the different uh, to the different AI tools that uh, that actually uh, you know uh, train the models uh, and uh, enhance 
enhance the uh, you know the capabilities of the uh, of the AI. Um, Gigamon itself, we utilize AI, uh, but we utilize it as a part of our our research and development activities. Um, that we still is still is still a work in progress that we're currently uh, trying to utilize. But uh, a lot of AI models uh, rely on uh, visibility and deep observability by Gigamon to provide them with the data so that actually the AI models can be trained. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you GN, for your question. OK. Good questions. Very good questions. Good audience. <laughs> I think it's time now for us to ask questions naman to our audience for them to get a chance to win an e-voucher coming from Gigamon. So, question? It's it's uh, now your turn. Yeah, yeah, I think, yes, Vlad, I think I got you there. Uh, while you're presenting, I prepared the questions. And yes. I'm going to turn it on screen so that our audience can see. So, again, to our online community, we will be giving away Starbucks e-vouchers worth 500 pesos each. I will just uh, probably reach out to you po later sa ating three winners. But in the meantime, allow me to share my screen. Uh, give me a second. Sorry if we have time pa po. Ano, pasensya na po. Okay, bibilisan ko lang. Ayan yeah, na. While, while you're uh, trying to share your screen, uh, paano ba yun? Pag sasagot sila, they just say, uh, they just type in hashtag PixPro and then the Opo. answer. Opo. Um, hashtag PixPro space and the answer. Okay. Madali lang naman po. This is fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks. So, keyboard warriors, are you ready? And the first question to our pop quiz is, blank is foundational to zero trust. So, fill in the blanks. It starts with N, S. Again, mm -hmm. the answer uh, should be in this format. Hashtag picks pro and the, the answer. Okay. I already have a clue there. Oh. Tignan po natin kung sino po makasagot. Pag-guide na lang po ako. Uh, Ayan, meron na. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, may sumagot na. Ayan. Tama. So, kung yeah. hindi ako naka... Okay. Ang, ang yeah. sagot po ay... Um, tama ba to? Um, yes. Yeah. Hashtag yeah. picks pro network security. Yes po. Congratulations. Um, Adet yes. Medina. Okay, Adet Medina. Okay. Network security. Yay. Tara kape. <laughs> so Tara that's kape. network security. Wait. Network security is foundational to zero trust. Sana si, all. Si Ani pala to. Si friend ko pala to. Si Ay, <laughs> <Ay, laughs> <Ay, laughs> Congratulations po. On to the next question. Message us. Okay. Just po, mamaya, piping ko din po kayo. Mm -mm. Okay, second question po natin. With Gigamon blank, blank, automation, security, and operational, sorry sa typo, efficiency in the hybrid cloud can be assured. Ano po yan? You oftentimes hear it from Vlad Vladimir. With Gigamon blank, Pwede sumali. <laughs> ang dali-dali lang yan, di ba? VDR lean. Kayang. Huh? Security and operational efficiency. Sorry po at nagmamadali. In the hybrid cloud can be assured. May sumagot na po ng tama. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the answer is, sabay-sabay. Yes. Gigamon, deep observability. Yes, congratulations, <laughs> Kai. Yay. Kay Gian, ano? Gian? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, person who asked the question. Congratulations, Miss Gian. Don't worry. Meron pa po tayong last question. Habol. Ang daming sumagot. Very good. Nakikinig po sila. Last question. <laughs> yes. Black products and solutions deliver network visible network intelligence uh, and insights to cloud security, observability, and network management tools. This company provides deep observability from core to cloud. Anong kumpanya po kaya ito ang nagpo-provide ng products and solutions to, na Pabula network na ng sagot. Hashtag Pixbro and the answer. Ah. This company Yako. provides deep observability from core to cloud. Okay. Oh, meron na. Pero um, can, okay. we, let's give chance to ano Yes, yung, yung mga nanalo na. Yes, si Jean nanalo na. You've already won. 
pero meron pa rin isa na yung kasunod niya, no? Ang sagot niya ay hashtag text from Gigamon. Yeah. Tama po. Tama. Yes. Congratulations kay Oni Meg Tops. Oni Meg Tops, yeah. Sorry ma'am, yan na, bigay po natin sa pangalawang sumagot. But thanks for... Oh, yes, thank you po. Ang galing ni, ano eh. Ang galing ni Gia, talaga nakikinig, ano? Opo. So, congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations po to the winners. Tara, kape. Brought to you by Starbucks. Tara, kape. Kung, kung gusto niyo ng kasabay magkape, nandito lang kami. <laughs> si Tibo, mukhang 3-in-1 na lang daw siya. Yatabo. <laughs> Kasama ka namin, Sir Tibo. Don't worry. <laughs> Congratulations anyway, to all our winners. I guess we have, ano po, uh, one last question, if we may. Okay, we keep on, uh, Sir uh, Vlad, we keep on hearing the, the term east-west and north-south traffic uh, okay. during your presentation. So what is the difference between the two? And which one should we monitor more to maximize cybersecurity defenses? That is an excellent question. I'm, I'm not glad, glad you brought it up. So um, how long time do we have? <laughs> Because it it could be take could your be. time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, as it happens, um, uh, we actually we uh, have have been um I have been writing on the subject on the subject uh, quite extensively. So uh, north south traffic is basically the traffic that comes in and out of the data center or a network segment. That basically that's it. That is that is uh, that is your routers, uh, your edge routers, or um, core switches that sit uh, on the networking segments. Right now, east-west traffic, it is the traffic between the workstations um, or workloads, either virtual or physical nodes within those segments. Now, the difference between east, east south uh, and um, not. Uh, not uh, south and east-west traffic um, is that uh, lateral movement, so east-west, is contained within one segment. So typically what will happen is that uh, if you don't have a visibility into the east-west traffic between the workstations, um, once the attacker gets in, um, malware is a typical example. So malware gets into one workstation and, and then start propagating. Now, uh, and then if you don't have a visibility into the, the communications between uh, the, the workstations, you will not be able to detect that. Now, um, granted, uh, endpoint security may help you, but you cannot install endpoint security on every workstations. So uh, endpoint security will cover maybe 50%. And attackers are very good at avoiding also endpoint security can be turned off as well. So that's why you have to monitor. Uh, that is actually the major difference between east-west uh, and um, and um, north-south traffic. In a nutshell, uh, actually, there's a white paper on the subject uh, that explains everything uh, very, very well, uh, and we can share it with the audience. I think Jen has it as well, but I can't just send it. Yeah. One of the so so um. When we actually, when, uh, and we did an experiment uh, within Gigamon, um, we, we set up, uh, of course, it was a, was a simulated attack. It wasn't a real attack, by the way. Um, but what we did is that we, we, um, we, had a, we had an environment where we simulated attack and we monitored only the north-south uh, north uh, uh, movements. Uh, and then we had another, another systems that uh, the same system that monitored also uh, the east-west traffic. Uh, and we could see that uh, the net, the north-south or parameter security tools, they could not detect the attacks that were happening uh, in the east-west uh, movements because it just doesn't go through them. You know, think about it, think about it like, like an airport security. So the airport security would let you in uh, and you go in, but if somehow actually what you do uh, within the airport, uh, it's pretty much uh, the airport security can, can't really can't really detect that uh, because you already pass uh, pass the security parameter. And then for more, um, we have white papers that explain it in more details.
Okay. Pero B, parang may isang kumakapol pa sa audience na question. Yes, uh, Vlad has one more question here sure. from Albert Remo. Does Gigamon support data classification? Um, like a report if data is sensitive, classified as PII. Okay. Um, so, as, n yes and no. So, Gigamon is not a DLP solution, right? So, for that one, uh, to achieve the level of uh, data classifications and uh, and uh, on a content level, for that one, you would need uh, you would need a proper uh, data loss prevention solutions. However, what Gigamon can do, Gigamon can inspect the uh, Gigamon can inspect the. Um, we actually we can generate uh, metadata attributes based on the network traffic, uh, and then we can generate certain um, certain attributes. So, for example, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we could we could identify the type of connections. Um, what type of it, what type is it? Where is it going? Uh, is there anything uh, suspicious that it's coming that, that, that is going on? Uh, but uh, to achieve a proper data classifications, uh, that is not uh, part of the Gilmore scope of solutions. Now, uh, DLP, DLP, by the way, DLP works with Gigamon. So what will happen is the DLP will provide the data that they need, and then afterwards the DLP would be able to generate uh, all of the reports. Now, just just to sum it up. All of the security tools that um, you know um, the users and the audience here is 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 using to secure the, the, the infrastructure, chances are they that they're using Gigamon uh, or a similar solution to provide the data so that they can operate. Just the way you need network switches to deliver your network traffic to applications and to end users, you need Gigamon solutions, visibility solutions to deliver the data and the required traffic, the security and monitoring system so that they can operate and be efficient. Okay, thank you, Sir Vlad. Okay. I guess we, uh, when we have a very good uh, discourse, a conversation, as regards to cybersecurity, time is not enough. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> we do not have enough time for this discussion, but definitely we will be seeing more of Gigamon, hopefully Sir Vlad as well in the coming uh, quinto and cybersecurity episodes in the future. So for now, let's just have the the parting words from Team Gigamon on how we should advocate cybersecurity more, uh, through these solutions. Question. Okay, let me start by thank you, of course, uh, Philippine Institute of Cybersecurity Professionals. Uh, for being very supportive of this advocacy. So from these Kwetuang cybersecurity sessions, we were able to um, share our knowledge uh, on how to make our uh, the Philippines cyber secure. Uh, and at the same time, now we also learn from you, from the audience through their questions and from through this uh, panel discussions. Maraming maraming salamat po. Vlad? Um. Yeah, well, uh, thank you, thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here and giving me giving me the chance to to speak uh, to this audience. Of course, um, we have our fearless leader uh, in Philippines that he's been driving driving the engagement uh, within uh, within the cybersecurity community. Um, and any questions, uh, any any um, any additional inquiries that you have, please please send them. We will address them now. What I'm doing is that I cannot, uh, I don't have uh, access to the. But what I'm doing right now is that I'm dropping, um, I'm dropping into the um, into the chat box, so you guys will see it. Uh, this is the East West Visibility White Paper that actually can be shared with the audience, uh, and that's explain the difference between East West, North, uh, North South traffic, uh, and what you need to do and what the benefits. So, uh, and of course, uh, when I'm Philippines, I will be looking forward to meeting you in person. Henry, mm -hmm. thank you, Vlad. Thank so you. just wanted to thank you lang no sa mga nanonood sa atin. So I hope uh, it's quite informative and of course uh, some learnings then about our solution. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you Gigamon. Um no, one minute na lang but uh, I did let me just go through this very quick. Na meron tayong mga shout out lang na mabilisan. No, hello from uh, the Philippine Public Safety College. I am po at magandang hapon din sa Marlon, Australia. Kay Ameline uh, Castillo, 
kay Albert Remo, kay kay Lieutenant Colonel or baka General na siya, Charles C. Ann Mirabel Salaya, hello sa iyo, miss you. Kay President Alan Pakulan, no, good afternoon. Kay Ben Isra Dokudao, good afternoon sa inyong lahat. Ayan, and uh, kay uh, Soz Ram. All right. Thank you so much. Maraming maraming salamat. Uh, DP Rabbi, saglit lang po sa mga winners po. I was just going to announce to the winners of our pop quiz earlier. I yes. going to drop you a direct message po uh, on how to get how to claim your prize. Maraming salamat. Yeah, thank you. Thank you Gigamon for the prizes, ah. Ang generous yes. talaga ng Gigamon. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes. I see again on the on our dress, Sir Christopher Son Bisan Laguatan, one of our regulars. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, of course, we have Marie D.C. Rao sa Jobs Estrada. Uh, and then, may nagpapa-shoutout dito kay Sir Henry. Kasi Savior pa, shoutout, Henry. Shoutout mo daw siya, sir. <laughs> shoutout. <laughs> shoutout. <laughs> okay, Jake Rodriguez Wamperada. Of course, we have BP Ricky here. Among the audience and Politena, shout out po from Canada. Maraming yes. maraming salamat mga Cupcakes Pro. Okay. So, if you're in, <laughs> let me do the honor. Okay. 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 Uh, we do Thank not you. have much time, but definitely we have a lot of Fridays na magkakasama-sama pa tayo for our Quintuang Cybersecurity. And of course, as part of our culture here in the, uh, the Philippine cybersecurity, kung yung iba, pag weekend, nagpapahinga. Of course, we still have time for the fami family and friends, but with cybersecurity and with FixPro, sabay-sabay po nating sabihin, happy lang. Happy lang. Wa walang walang weekend. weekend. Magandang hapon mga kapis ko. Thank you. 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 Bye. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Sir Vlad. Sir Bye. Henry.